share our story, which we live together with a new joint venture of Kaspersky and Etelma Group. Uh, we will present it for three people. Firstly, because three people is a winning formula in Russia for any kind of meeting. Secondly, that any story about industrial Internet of Things require team. It's not possible to do it alone by one company, by one technology. So I will present together with Maxim Karpuchin, who is the head of business development of Aprotech, and we have a joker in our sleeve, Sergei Solovyov from Siemens. Let's start, yes. Let's start from traditional background. You see in the middle of the slide definitely area for kicks for traditional industrial cybersecurity. If we go to the upper floors, we have to change our language to the terms profit, risk, losses. But on the right, on the bottom, you can see interesting mathematics. This is a real big data, which is unknown for many of us. So, in average, number of signals or sensors which generate data on a shop floor, about 1.5 thousand. It's a reasonable amount, because if we will take some backbone oil pipe, it can be even millions type of signals. If we will calculate data sampling rate, so frequency of the data which can be generated by one sensor, it can be 10, 15 thousands in average. It is not a maximum. And then, if we will calculate number of sensors, frequency of the data, and the reasonable amount of one record which is generated but by this sensor, we will easily find 100 gigabyte per minute, which means that every 30 seconds, my modern smartphone is full by industrial data if we will collect 100 percent of the data. But what analyst says, that currently, in our industrial environment, we do not collect even 15% of the data. So, most of our SCADA system live with some poor sampling. It's enough for SCADA system. It's enough to follow with the process. It is even enough to replicate SCADA system to some analytical uh, storage and applications, but what if we could accumulate and use 100%? I put only one example here. It is about winning of 12 days. So if you are able to collect information, provide pre-processing, machine learning, and provide a real decision, you can save 12 days. 12 days came from real project, which Siemens had. So imagine that if you are going to the vacation to Sochi, I think 12 days in advance can be good value for you to, to book appropriate engineer, to book appropriate spare part, and to resolve this failure before it will happen. But 12 days, it's a not a final destination for digital transformation. One of the goals of my speech today provide you difference between automation and digitalization. Because automation mostly will finish on step number one and step number two with prediction, analyzing, etc. But it's a not a final stop. If you can collect all industrial data and can 
provide dynamic KPIs monitoring, you can get more. You can change your business. One of the examples I would like to share, I wish we will see some Russian companies, but the name of the brand SKF, international brand who provide a set of bearing products for different industries to reduce the friction in industrial area. A couple of years ago, they did sell traditional products. A couple of bearing products in a boxes for a couple of dollars per one piece. It is not anymore. Today, they provide it for free, but together with the box, they provide a paper with a contract which they call rotation as a service. Because now, with the maturity of the technology, they can monitor their product in real time or close to real time, get the KPIs and provide invoice every month based on number of rotations the product done. If it is in stop mode, it's for free. If it's work, please pay our invoice. So we see this is a big trend. Imagine that if there are a 10 companies in your industry and one of them will provide this business model, I think it makes sense. CNC to one hour CNC net machine time. Big trucks to one kilometer of container transportation. But it is not possible if you cannot monitor your physical asset in real time. And this is a, one of the main message in the area of industrial Internet of Things. So we see that if we will be able to transfer this big amount of data and analyze it in real time, we can get some advantage of our business. But it's difficult to do it with existing infrastructure. So some new enriched adding to enterprise architecture came. And we see it as a simple way to present industrial Internet of Things gateway, which provide connection between physical assets, between ICS environment, and upper level of analytical cloud platform. Let's say this way. I would like to mention that on top of industrial data, which we now can deliver with a more volume, we also can provide information about workforce. We also can provide information about some environmental monitoring. It's not about only data which we can get from PLCs and sensors. Data is about possible enriched model which can help us to build a new KPIs. I would like to inform you that one of the business direction of our company, which is joint venture of Kaspersky, is to create this so-called cyber immune gateway. Most of products we have currently on the market are based on some clone of operating system of general purposes, like Linux clone. And of course, we see a couple of weaknesses. I will not go through all of them. It's just a small subset of real weaknesses. But you see that this small product can be source of DDoS or phishing attack to the external world. This small box can be source or intermediate point for access to some physical assets. So we should be sure that all risks are minimal. 
So what we did? We created Cyberimmune IIoT Gateway. We took hardware from Siemens. We put Kaspersky operating system, which we did set up for the threat model, which is relevant for usage of this device in cases when we would like to get information from physical level to the cloud platform. You see that we can even eliminate some very popular products. Sorry to say, but in the era of cyber immune systems, even Kaspersky will face with erosion of existing products because it does not need antivirus, device control, and other stuff. Our first experience is ready for piloting, which means that we can understand right now OPC standards. There is a special component on top of uh, this box. It is based on Kaspersky OS. It is immune. And we understand how information in a secure way can be transferred to uh, Siemens Mindsphere ecosystem. Okay. So with that, we have a chance to enrich existing infrastructures with a new quality, which will allow to work with the industrial data and provide this data transferring to analytical engines, which we can use for the further business decisions. In our case, some levels of the story have a particular names. We have a MindConnect family, and our gateway is a part of MindConnect family. We have a MindSphere as a name of the platform, and some MindApps, which represent business services. Having such opportunity, I would like to present also Sergei Solovyov, who will provide you a couple of slides about what is industrial Internet of Things platform, what is the difference between traditional packages, and how we can generate new value. Sergey, please welcome to the stage. After this very uh, uh, insightful presentation and the slides uh, Andre just uh, has presented, I would like to uh, focus on some uh, additional things which uh, are, from my point of view, very important. So, how to uh, link the uh, technical aspects of this development with the business value? Why I think this is the starting point for every uh, discussion on implementation of the um, IoT and uh, the digital journey. Actually, this is, first of all, this is our experience. And if, if, thank you, this will help. <laughs> uh, so, first of all, uh, um, if we talk to uh, any of our customers about the digital transformation, uh, that's discussion about the business, not about the security, not about the particular uh, assets, machines, PLCs, that's discussion about the business. So, the business value is, is the key content of that discussion. And, sorry, but, I wanted to... Uh, so, uh, again, the, the business. And uh, here I, I, uh, I would like to come back to the uh, motivating uh, presentation of Patrick Miller. And this is exactly the, our experience. So this is the confirmation of, of, uh, of uh, that uh, uh, lesson, actually. Uh, Mindsphere. Why we uh, talk about the cloud here? So actually, why uh, the, the, the question is why um, the cloud is a part of the industrial landscape now? So Andre provided uh, nice pictures where uh, uh, the cloud level is already presented as an integral part of the um, industrial py pyramid. Is that really the case? Is that really the, uh, the situation? 
Um, I think the, uh, to answer that question, we need to, to understand what uh, is actually the, um, the goal of using the, the cloud technologies in the industrial applications. So uh, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, have a look on the Siemens experience. So if we talk about the um, simple monitoring systems or, or remote monitoring of some industrial assets, that's really not the uh, digital transformation. So that's not the, something innovative. Uh, the uh, necessity to have the cloud as the um, uh, integral part and, and the uh, uh, cornerstone of the um, digitalization platform is that you need, of course, the scalability and the expandability and the openness. But the uh, important thing, that the most important is, again, the, the business uh, reasoning is that uh, digitalization is not about the collecting a lot of data. It's about the uh, transforming the business model. It, it's about the launching of new business models. And that's why we, uh, we see, and I, I do confirm that, yes, the, uh, the cloud is not uh, only a part of a uh, uh, cost-effective solution for uh, launching some IT application somewhere in the, in the data center, but, but the, uh, I do confirm that, yes, we consider the cloud as uh, the part of the industrial landscape. And the MindSphere is uh, uh, the Siemens uh, platform, we call it uh, um, operating system, open operating system, which was developed within Siemens to uh, enable not only to collect some data and to uh, gain some uh, uh, insights out of that data, but to launch applications and to uh, offer to our partners, to our customers and the system integrators to uh, write own applications and to, to uh, bring some additional value to that ecosystem. And this will enable, from our point of view, really to create this new business value out of the data which can be collected from the industrial assets. So the point here is that it is not enough just to uh, connect some industrial assets and to uh, let the data be uh, collected and stored somewhere. It's not even enough to uh, uh, process that data. You need to gain some insights. You need to gain some value. And to use that value to, uh, uh, to build new business, to, to launch new business model, and to transform your operation. Uh, uh, let, me, let me shed some light on what is inside, so how it works. Uh, so actually, quite a mm, comprehensive picture, but I, I will uh, try to, to be uh, 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 to, to explain it. So in fact, we, we consider that within MindSphere we have three main layers. The first layer is the connection layer or MindConnect. Andre has just mentioned that uh, the layer where we uh, position this brand new uh, development is exactly the connectivity layer. Then we have the platform itself, which enables uh, the data collection and uh, the processing, and uh, of course uh, the uh, cyber security, the information security is an integral part of it. And then on top of that, there is the most interesting part. It is uh, the part which is called Mind Apps. So uh, the idea here is close to what we all know out of uh, our um, uh, smartphones. So the idea here is to uh, have an ecosystem where not only the Siemens applications can be used, but also the applications developed by our partners, uh, probably small, small startups, uh, system integrators, expert companies, etc. So that you can be, uh, as a customer, um, have a possibility to choose and to use really different uh, applications to gain that insight, as I mentioned. Okay. Also, also, uh, I just mentioned very shortly that the even edge connection here is also, uh, and the edge analytics, edge uh, processing is also mentioned because it's also part of the platform, but I will not focus um, on that. Uh, so, as I said, this is the um, Siemens uh, industrial IoT platform, or as we call it, operating system. Okay, great. Uh, and since we are talking about the collection of the process data, the production data from some uh, production assets of our customers. Of course, the uh, cybersecurity is an integral part. So cybersecurity is a cornerstone. And of course, 
uh, within Siemens we have a uh, very strong uh, cybersecurity concept, and this is, as I said, is a, a basement of uh, uh, Mindsphere. Why it is important? Why it, is, why it matters? It is because uh, uh, we collect very sensitive data, and have, uh, please have in mind that if if you have a digital twin of the product and or production process, having the data collected from the assets, you can easily have all the secrets of the production, even the recipes and the technology and the construction, etc. So everything. Uh, uh, all this sensitive data of our customers are stored here. That's why we have this multi-layered concept with uh, tenant um, segmentation, with uh, uh, storing of encrypted data, even the connection of the uh, mm, uh, assets and the machines to, to the platform itself uh, is uh, enabled by the uh, secure, sec secured uh, HTTPS over TLS connection. Uh, but if we look uh, at the shop floor, typically we, we, we see that uh, there is a zoo of different systems and the different uh, probably legacy uh, devices, uh, PLCs, etc. Uh, how to connect that? How to persuade the customer that it will be really uh, beneficial to have the data connected and uh, uh, transferred to our wonderful uh, cloud-based system? So. That's, uh, the answer is we, we need to, to convince that the data will be stored securely, the data will not be used in a non-authorized way, and uh, the data will then gain these uh, effects and bring the new business value, uh, uh, as I said in the beginning. And uh, the development which we present together here on this stage today, is actually aimed at reaching this target. And that's why it, it, it's beneficial from our point of view, and uh, that's why this matters. And that's why we see that this is the pioneer develop, development combining the uh, uh, openness of uh, IoT platform from Siemens and the brand new immune operating system of Siemens for the benefit of our customers in Russia and all over the world. Having said that, I would like to uh, hand over to Maxim, who will provide some live demo to convince you that really this connection of uh, uh, the uh, production assets through the immune gateway, so covering all the production and value chain, can bring business value. Maxim, the stage is yours. My name is Maxim and I'm a business responsible for whole development and uh, for uh, products in Aprotech. And today I'll show you one of our products, it's a secure gateway. It's based on Kaspersky operating system. But before, yes, this is demo. But before I show you this, I again a uh, little bit touch a general architecture of our projects. It's a high level. Uh, architecture, of course, but it's simple because directly we connect our gateway to uh, assets, to equipment, and send the data to the cloud. Right now, we have uh, three uh, areas of a project. It's uh, manufacturing, city infrastructure, and uh, environment monitoring. Mm, all of them, uh, we are proud all of them, and especially about uh, public reference, in these projects, we have right now uh, only one. Uh, in other ones, they are under NDA, so uh, I can't tell you all the details about them. But right here on the cybersecurity conference, of course, it's the most interesting to uh, see about, uh, listen about manufacturing. Uh, I can't uh, tell you all the details, but I can uh, repeat. Uh, technology uh, in our lab laboratory and uh, show you. So uh, we organize our top secret laboratory. Uh, this picture from this. <laughs> uh, and if you uh, don't believe this top secret, just uh, look at the parts. So uh, of course it should be smart engineer. Yes, uh, high performance equipment, a lot of equipment, cookies because the engineer needs power. 
and uh, of course, cute kitten. Because no kitten, no secrets. It's a, it's a, it's a base. <laughs> so um, more details about this stand. It's quite simple. We have a cinematic simulator. It's a CNC machine that uh, usually in, in produce some details. I think you all know them. It's a gateway and mind sphere. So for this demo, we took uh, three simple parameters to send it uh, to the mind sphere. And uh, uh, right now, show you how it works. So the engineer is ready. <laughs> um, this is the show of this uh, Siemens simulator. It's first part of the stand. So it's connected uh, to the gateway by the Ethernet with uh, OPC UA uh, standard protocol. We choose this protocol because it's an uh, industrial standard. Uh, and now it's sure the red one goes to the internet. And of course, we need to show what happens on the gateway. It's a loaded uh, Kaspersky OS. And um, here, it's a fleet manager. It's a, one of the base uh, MindSphere application, uh, which helps you to easily collect all information from a CNC machine uh, and right here from a simulator. So we need to push a green button to start the program. So detail is ready and the tool is coming. I think um, all of you saw this on the real production. Now we need to start sending data on the gateway. And uh, on the fleet manager, we can see what's happened. Uh, we need to update manually and the spindle speed, yeah, it's live. Of course, uh, this application is a quite simple application that goes with MindSphere and allows you to see a lot of parameters uh, quick, fast, very fast. And if you change something on uh, your uh, CNC machine that you never do in real life, because it's uh, quite dangerous and uh, it will be a lot of questions from your uh, engineer. But here on the simulator we can do and see that it's a changing online and allows you to, to see all, um, all changes in real time. And of course it's a... Uh, It's secure because we use our industrial gateway and you, or, or let's say it's not secure, it's immune. It's immune, it's immune signals uh, to the mind sphere. OPC UA protocol allows you to collect not only numbers but also um, program name, uh, errors, or, or another. Um, and again, we used OPC UA industrial protocol. And what do you need to start? As you can, as you saw, it was only three parts. You, know, you need mind for access, secure, gateway, and uh, any industrial asset. And right now, you don't need any service. You don't need any additional local software or additional hardware, nothing. Simple, fast, and secure. And next question, but what will we get? Because we saw on the demonstration that we saw some numbers and uh, maybe the question is that we will have industrial da data. No. In the future, like Andre said, uh, the final step is to get new business model because MindSphere allows you to create new applications. It's not just monitoring or collecting data, it's operation. 
cloud operation IoT platform to create new business services. And how usually on TV shows, I need to tell you, call now, right now, to Kaspersky or to Aprotech or to Italma Group and ask for, a, this, ask for this gateway, ask for a pilot, ask for a project, ask for me for, and uh, we will show you on your case, in your production, how it will work. And uh, here, you can see how Mindsphere in real life can, can change your future. Yeah, we'll, we'll, oh, thank you. We would like that uh, some of you will recognize your company in a uh, five year or three years ahead. So uh, thank you very much. We have a last slide. Thank you very much. <laughs>